Hello everyone. I'm going to be using the watercolors from, I believe it's Yuli. Yuli, I'm not sure. The link is here as well as in the description. They are on Etsy and they have the most beautiful selection of watercolor paints, um, which I haven't used a lot of in the past, but um, for simple backgrounds, this is amazing. So I'm using the fairy set, which I got on Etsy. Um, like I said, link will be in the description of this video. Um, I started off with blue. I'm using all the colors in the fairy set. So there's blue, violet, coral, gold, and green. And I'm going to do two coats of this the same way you just dip your fan brush in water, you get your um, little pan of watercolor a little wet and you can let it dry and I'm going to do a second coat. This is it dry now. It's going to look totally different with a coat of resin which I'm going to do after this second coat. Um, I'm going to resin it along with a bunch of other stones that I have ready. Um, just going to use leftover resin so that I can cover this and keep this as my background and work on it later um, for a tutorial for you guys. So this is it, resined. Look at that. It's gorgeous. I absolutely love it. And now we have a beautiful canvas to work on. So you guys have seen me do this before. It's just a droopy daisy. Um, basically the whole thing with this tutorial is just to give you a new idea for your background. You definitely don't have to resin it first, um, but I had some extra resin and I wasn't going to be finishing this tutorial. So I covered it up with resin to see what it would look like. And, and then I let it dry for about 15, 16 hours. And then now I'm just painting a black droopy daisy with a paintbrush. It doesn't have to be perfect. You do whatever you want. You don't even have to do a daisy. Um, pretty, pretty much you can do a, the silhouette of anything that you want. Um, and then we're going to outline it with gold because that's what I like to do. <laughs> of course, you guys know me. You know I haven't really changed much. Um, more glitter maybe, um, fancier backgrounds maybe. Lots of practice but I still have my favorites and gold and black and dots and glitter. Well, I guess I really haven't changed. <laughs> this one has it all. And now I'm going to be using my Cricut. Um, I don't like lettering. So you guys saw on my last video with the uh, dog paw print on our hearts. Um, I told you I didn't like doing lettering and if I don't have to do lettering, I'm not going to. So one of the main reasons why I got a Cricut is so I don't have to do lettering and stress and worry about my artwork and ruin it with horrible lettering <laughs> and throw away rocks that I spent so much time on uh, just because of lettering. So I printed off a little stencil that I purchased off of Etsy, I believe. Um, I will look and I will leave the link to where I purchased this, uh, stencil. It might even be on the Cricut Design space. Um, if you're a subscriber to Cricut Design and you have a Cricut, it might be on there already, but you can definitely not use a stencil. You can do it by hand if you're confident that way. Um, but mostly this was pretty much about the background and then the dotted, uh, the dotted flower on top and then the lettering with the chrome uh, chrome effect. So it's not really about the lettering, but it's about what the lettering says. Because this one says you are enough. You are enough. So this is just uh, stencil, stencil tape, stencil vinyl. Um, I bought it off Amazon. I put it in my Cricut machine and I bought the uh, cut file that says you are enough. And then I can print that cut file off on my Cricut and make a stencil like I've made. And then I just stick it on here. Ta-da-da-da! But that's not all. 
I don't like to use a stencil to begin with, um, but it saves me a lot of time and stress. So I put my stencil on and then I do fancy things with it. I don't just leave it the way it is. I like to fancy it up a little bit. Um, so now I'm using a finger sponge to sponge on the letters through the stencil and then I pick off that blue stencil vinyl and then all I should have left is the letters and they're messy looking they're not too clear um, they're not you know it's not really about the, the letters um, it's about what the letters say <laughs> once again um, but I'm gonna fancy these letters up okay so We've got the background, which is beautiful. So that's one thing that you can try out. Um, all different types of metallic watercolor are great, but I'll be honest with you, I did purchase some from Amazon and I was not happy with the results. So I went straight back to this little palette that I purchased on Etsy because the colors were just so bold and bright. Uh, and very metallic and highly pigmented. So um, it just looks so much nicer up against a, a black surface or or dark rocks like this one. Um, and it I, you just have to trust me. <laughs> and if you've purchased one of my stones that have this watercolor background, um, please leave a comment in the description and, and let people know how they look in person. They're absolutely gorgeous. So I am making the letters much bolder. I'm trying to keep the nice lettering and not mess it up too much, but I didn't feel that the letters stood out enough. Um, so I'm making them much bolder with my gold paint. Um, and you'll see why I'm doing the lettering first before I do the dotting in the droopy daisy. Um, but I'm going to be adding black as well inside this lettering. Now someone did mention to me recently that I went overboard with my lettering uh, by adding the black and the chrome over top of the, the gold. Um, but that's what's great about my channel, you guys. You guys don't have to do what I'm doing. If you see something you like, do it. If you see something you don't like, that's the best way to avoid something. <laughs> just don't do it. Um, but I'm just here to inspire you. And if you like the letters the way I'm doing them, fantastic. If not, um, that's okay too. Hit the like button. Hit the unlike button. The thumbs down. It doesn't make me sad. What does make me sad is people leaving horrifying comments in my my uh, comment section and I have to quickly delete them before someone's feelings get hurt or um, someone sees it and 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 starts arguing or or what have you uh, there's been so I'm quick if you guys see it I don't leave a lot of nasty comments I get rid of those people very very quick so you can see I've outlined my letters in gold, They've, they're, they're gold first, and then I put the black in the center when the letters were dry. That's the best way to do it, is you gotta wait for the letters to dry. Then, um, I made sure that I didn't overlap any of my gold, and I had to make sure everything was visible, and I'm just gonna let that dry. I'm just making sure that all my gold is still there after putting that black inside. Um, you do have to go over things a few times in order to make them uh, a little bit nicer, a little bit cleaner, but uh, it's worth it. Definitely worth it in the end. Sometimes I outline something like four or five, six times uh, in the end using gold and black just so that it looks clean and tidy. Um, you want the lettering to stand out. You want the flower to stand out, but you also want to see that background. So I'm putting kind of everything on top. So we've got the flower standing out on top of that background. You're not going to miss it. It's very visible. You can see the colors of the rainbow when you turn uh, this rock in specific lights, um, in certain light. And it looks beautiful out in the sun, absolutely gorgeous. You might have seen this before, or one just like it, because I did post a picture recently, and I had a lot of people asking me 
how it's done. So here I am to save the day. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I haven't saying to you guys in a few uh, tutorials, eh? <laughs> Anyway, I'm still perfecting my lettering, trying not to ruin it, um, trying to keep with what the stencil look like, but it doesn't look exactly the same anymore um, because I've, I've messed with it so much. But I want to see those letters. So the letters are going to have chrome. They're going to stand out all on their own. Then the flower. I started with bigger dots. And I just filled in bigger dots. And now I'm basically filling in any black space there with small white dots. So you can use whatever size dots you want. Um, I just find it, it looks nice. There's a bit of a design there when you have a few bigger ones that stand out. And then the rest are small. And I've obviously put the high speed on this. This is not how fast I dot. I am not a machine. Um, it takes a long time, but I watch movies and stuff with my husband while I'm doing this. And he's kind of fascinated with how well I can pay attention by just using my ears because <laughs> I'm focused on the dotting. But like I can follow along with anything we're watching and sometimes know more than what he does <laughs> that, than what's going on in the movie. Um, and I'm dotting the whole time. So I just find things to listen to that are relaxing and and uh and dot away don't get scared don't get frustrated don't get anxious when you see me dotting uh it's actually really relaxing and a lot of fun and you can do a lot of really cool stuff with these little dots so now now for the top of our flower I put a little bit of pumpkin orange mixed with a little bit of red. So it's just made that orange a little bit darker and not so bright. Uh, I'm going to move from that color up to regular pumpkin orange. And then it's going to have a little bit of moon yellow at the very top. But you can see I'm starting with larger dots at the base of this part of the flower. And then as I go up, whoopsie, I made a mess. Big old blob of paint there. I'm just going to fix that. Um, but my dots are getting smaller as I get to the top of the flower. So try and do that. Uh, start off with bigger flowers at the base and then get a bit smaller once you've changed to that orange. And then even smaller when you've changed to moon yellow or whatever kind of yellow you want to use. I just think it looks kind of cool and it helps shape that part of the flower if you know what I mean. So now for the stem and the leaf I'm just going to use two shades of green grass green and classic green one's lighter one's a bit darker um, I'm using the dark as kind of like a, a shade shade green <laughs> so anything that might be lower uh, or in the shade shaded in any way like the bottom of the leaf there it's going to be darker green and then the rest is going to be lighter green so I'll show you what I'm doing uh, you'll be able to see it much much better uh, once it's all done and come together and it's all behind resin because that will bring out all of the individual colors and you'll probably be able to see it much better I feel like there's something wrong with my lighting today it might be the fact that it's really gloomy and it has been all weekend. <laughs> so unfortunately, this is my painting area in gloom, in the gloom. I have a huge window right beside me <laughs> so, and a light and a light on my camera. But for some reason, it just seems kind of gloomy. <laughs> so now that I've let all my dots dry on my flower and on the stem, I'm going to be using this UV top coat nail gel and I'm painting it into the black areas of my letters. You guys saw me do this before. This is to give it like a very strong uh, blue. I'm going to be using a dark bluish purple uh, chrome chrome effect and it looks amazing and it gives the letters like a whole different look compared to the rest of the stone. Everything is separated from each other. I put it under a UV light for about a minute 20 
um, make sure it's cured. And then I use a makeup sponge, eyeshadow sponge. There we go. We're blurry. Sorry, guys. I'm just rubbing this onto those letters. And then I use my handy dandy desk broom, which is just a fan brush, fan paint brush. Uh, and I wipe off any excess glitter. If you can see any blue that's on, on the surface of the stone right now, uh, that is the chrome powder. I'm just going to wipe that off before we resin. Um, I only really want it to stick to the letters. So anywhere you get that, uh, that top coat, that's where the chrome is going to stick. And sometimes it does stick to resin surfaces. So I just take a wet cloth or a wet paper towel or a lint free, um, lint free wipes for, for nail polish and stuff. You can use those to get rid of any excess chrome powder that might have stuck to your rock. But other than that, it's going to pretty much just stick to my letters. And so we have very different background. There's like a colorful textured background on the stone and then your dotted flower and then your chrome lettering. It all stands out separately and looks kind of like amazing once it's all married together. And I'm going to coat it all with another coat of resin. And once again, you don't have to coat it the first time, but I did. I don't know. I just had extra stuff. <laughs> Make sure you outline your flower outline everything. I'm even going to outline my lettering and make sure you outline your stem. It makes it pop off the background a lot more and it uh, it's just the way I like to do it. If you forget, it doesn't really matter, but you will find that it stands out more if you do outline it in the black. Just be careful you don't remove any of your gold or your chrome and just go over everything really quick. Make sure it looks the way you want it to before you seal it. So I'm going to be sealing it tonight. And we will see what it looks like all together under a beautiful coat of resin. I'm just finishing up my lettering because <laughs> I'm a bit picky about that. I've always been picky about lettering. But thank goodness for the crickets. <laughs> uh, time for resin bath. We'll see you soon. Well, since I don't have anything on the go to show you on my desk, I thought I would show you my front porch flowers. My chrysanthemums. Aren't they beautiful? <laughs> Next time there will be an episode of what's at my desk or on my desk. But until then... Here we go. Isn't that beautiful? And it looks really nice up against the flowers too. All that metallic paint really stands out. Depending on the texture of your stone, it's going to look so cool. That metallic hits all the little textured bits of, of the stone. I just love this in the background. Don't forget to check out the description of this video. And please know, you are enough. All of you, you are all enough. I love you and I will see you very, very soon.